Hey everybody, it's Dave Vecdale, learningdslrvideo.com. So I have a question for you guys out there who know the Sony cameras really well, because I don't. Um, it, it's a long-winded question, and if you can stick around, basically I'm looking to find out how to use color depth, and something's not making sense with Sony. So um, real quick, this is the Atomos Shogun, and this is one of the main reasons I got it in, was just for this one particular test, and something's not quite making sense, but... It's a fantastic device just from its diagnostic tools. For instance, um, if you know out here you can see I've got white, gray, and black. I don't have this quite right because you can see it's reflecting on this one chart made by DSC Labs. But anyway, really quick, this um, you can go through waveform, you've got RGB parade, you got your vector scope, which we're gonna come back to here in a minute. And then you got right here, this is very interesting, is kind of I believe a blown up version of the vector scope, but it's show, just showing you kind of in the center. And if you look down at my Sony A7S, um, if I go to white balance and I go over to Kelvin, and let's go back up here. And if I move right now at 4800, and if I move it to like 4900, you can see it shifts. Or if I move it down to 4700, you can see it shifts. So you definitely wants to be kind of in that center area. Now, if I go to the uh, this grid here, I think it's called a color shift. I don't know what Sony's version of their terminology is, but if I were to shift this to more green, let's say where it's supposed to be, that's in the center, you can see it's way off. It's way too green. And I got fluorescent lights, which totally makes sense. So if I go to a M3, a minus three green, you can see it's, and if I go too much, there's minus four. So I want to be right there in the middle. So very powerful tool. Love it, love it, love it. So there's some just awesome tools in this thing. Um, it is kind of pricey, um, for records in 4k off of the a7s and all that great stuff. Okay. So here comes my question. Let's go back down here. So what I'm going to do is get out of, um, the white balance, you know, picture profile one, and I'm just going to make changes within picture profile one. So black level, I'm not going to change. Uh, we're going to change the uh, gamma curve here in a second. And we're also going to play around and where my color is going to, my question is going to come in is with these two, the color depth and color phase. So let's go back up. Oh, and by the way, I've increased the saturation all the way up to plus 32 so we can see what's going on in the vector scope a lot better. So what I'm going to do is start off with our gamma curve first. Um, just to step, step it through, it's just so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to start off with movie. Let's go back up to here. And then we're going to turn on our, oops, sorry, vector scope. And again, like I said before, I've saturated all these colors as much as they'll go so to see if they line up with the boxes. You can actually see some are in the boxes um, and are correct in the movie because right now we're in the movie um, gamma curve. Um, and then we're going to step through here still. Not much difference between that. You can see there's a little bit difference on the skin tones between movie and still. And there's Cine 1, Cine 2, which I like to use a lot. Cine 3, it's like, whoa. Cine 4, which I use sometimes. There's a 709 and then 709-800. There's S-Log, which are overexposed. I'm not even going to get into that stuff right now. So what I'm going to do is start off with Cine 2. Because um, I'm not, you know, S-Log gets even more complex. I just want to deal with Cine 2 first. Because um, that's the one I use the most. And then what we're going to do is go down, like I said before, we're saturation plus 32, but I'm going to change the color mode now this time. Let's start off at the top at movie and see what that looks like. So here's movie. There's still. Movie, still. And you can see there's quite a bit of difference between the two. And what we're looking for is how they line up with the graticules, the lines. The more they line up, um, the more correct. And again, I'm not going for any sort of filmic look here i just want to get super accurate colors and then in post my philosophy is change the colors later but i want to start off with the most accurate so we got movie still here cinema it's like whoa that's not accurate to me pro still not very accurate there's a 709 matrix no not even close black and white obviously don't have any color and s gamut um yeah i don't know what's going on there <laughs> again i am not a professional colorist um, but to me, looking at these, the difference between these two, it basically, when I look at, I kind of average them out, I'm going to say that still is the most accurate in terms of colors, the way they're lining up. The red's a bit off, yellow's a bit off, 
and green's a bit off. But these three look equal distance from the box. As you can see, red's a bit more saturated. Yellow is a little bit more saturated, and just greens just shifted a little bit. So here comes my question. So we're going to leave it here on still. And then we're going to go down to color phase. So color phase, as I go through it, it changes the phase. And here I'm going to show you what happens in the vector scope so you can actually see. I've never known this before, how this is affected. So here's plus one, plus two. You can see it's rotating. Basically, I guess it's just shifting the hue of the image. And here it all is at minus seven, six, five, two, one, zero. So here we are back to a color phase. And the reason I bring this up is because of the definition of color depth has to do with color phase. Because if I look at the definition of their color depth uh, in the manual, which is not in the physical manual, but the online manual, it says, sets the color depth of each color phase. This function is more effective for chromatic colors and less effective for achromatic colors. Color looks deeper as you increase the setting. So let's, let's demonstrate this. So as I go down here, as I increase the red channel, look at the red box here. I'll go up to the, the um, Shogun here in a second. But as I increase this, watch the red channel. See how it gets darker? And then it gets lighter. So again, I am not a professional colorist here. But if you guys can tell me what's going on, I was expecting this red channel to change, either shift this way or shift this way. But watch what happens. You, and also notice here, so you're looking at, oops, sorry. So you're looking at the red here, and you're looking at the red dot right here. Here we go. Here's plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven. See how dark it is right here? But you'll notice that dot didn't change at all. Here's a minus seven, and look, it didn't change. I can step all the way through here, and it doesn't change. So I, I'm kind of baffled. So again, I'm not a professional colorist. Anybody out there that is a colorist and knows what's going on, Basically, what I'm trying to do, get really accurate colors on Cine 2. I'm going to deal with S-Log 2 later, but just Cine 2, get really accurate colors, and then I can do manipulation and post later. So anybody can tell me what's going on there, make suggestions. Um, that would be awesome because this is this Shogun is a really powerful tool, um, and I can do this in real time versus reiterating back and forth in the software and looking at scopes that way. So any help at all, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.